Hey guys, it's Rafi, and this is a game that I'm playing against. Always give full effort. Okay, always give full effort. So this is a, a line of the Karo Khan that I play, and um, yeah, so the idea is to um, wait for this c5 move and then transpose into this sort of a system where now instead of playing e4, c6, d4, b5, you know, here I play push, then push c5, he takes, then get the bishop out, and then hopefully pick this pawn back up momentarily. <clears throat> Moves like knight c6, e6, boom, all these pieces will be, pawns will be under attack, hopefully. Excuse me one second. So, okay. Let's go ahead and attack the um, e5 pawn first. <clears throat> so queen a5 check. If b4, then I just take it. So if queen a5 check, knight c3 is forced. Queen a5, knight c3, d4, bishop takes c6, b takes c6, queen takes d4, and I haven't really gotten a whole lot yet. So he's playing pretty aggressively here. He wants to go ahead and hold on to this pawn. <clears throat> well, let's... um. Continue to aggressively attack. He'll play b4, I'm sure. Bishop b3 is also interesting here. Strong player from India. Rapid 2245, very strong blitz over 2000. Very good player, for sure. <clears throat> the main concern, I'm not so concerned about the pawn. I'm more concerned that my bishop may not be able to get out <clears throat> if he does block this in with b4 and uh, he might have it this bind you know over here on d6 so that's those are things i'm more concerned about i don't really care for this pawn or that pawn to be honest with you so if i can go ahead and free up my pieces i think that um hopefully the position will be okay for me so if b4 a5 c3 
<clears throat> Let's go ahead and throw in a five first. That's interesting. I thought he would have played. Hmm. Oh, I see. So A takes B, A takes B. Uh, okay, okay, I see now what's going on here. <clears throat> He'll just take back with the bishop and his um, pawn is going to be okay. So A takes B, A takes B, rook takes A1, bishop takes A1, queen A8, bish... I guess in that case he could play knight. Knight out, maybe, to C3 or something. Now I have queen g5 also. Since he put the bishop on that diagonal. I'm going to go for queen g5. It's an active developing move. Attacks b2 sort of indirectly attacks e5. I'm trying to get him to play g3 so he can have some weaknesses on this side. Queen f3 is one option that he has, but then that hangs the c2 pawn. King f1 is interesting, actually. And king f1 actually might be the best move here. After which he will just castle by hand. So he'll play knight f3, hit my queen again, and then he'll play. Have to, he'll have to, I guess, play g3 at some point anyway to get the king to its proper square. So I don't know. It's interesting. I feel like king f1 has got to be... Oh, he plays that. <clears throat> that hangs c2, though. There's also bishop e4 here. Ooh, bishop e4 is a nice move. Getting the g2 pawn for effect. And maybe the rook in the corner as well. So bishop e4, queen g3, queen takes, rook, h takes, then bishop takes. Do I want to go into that position or do I want to... There's also takes, takes, rook takes, bishop takes, queen c1 check. 
is very interesting. Queen d1. So takes. Couple of interesting options here. Do I take on C2 or do I go into this sort of end game situation? So if a takes B, there's also H4. He can kick my queen off first. But then queen G6 hits the C2 pawn again. Let's go for this move. Let's try to keep some tension on the board and not trade to some sort of endgame. Oh, that's interesting. He played that very fast. He didn't even consider anything. He played that very, very fast. Now I take here. And I check. Queen has to go to d1. Queen takes c2. Queen takes, bishop takes. Doesn't give me a whole lot. Therefore, I believe taking with the bishop on c2 first is got to be the way to go here. Because now I have multiple threats. Queen c1 is a threat. Bishop takes b1 is a threat. So he has to really play careful here. I feel like. Otherwise, he can get clobbered pretty quickly here. Position is getting very tactical. That was a nice move, actually. Now that blocks that diagonal. Hmm. Yeah. And takes away bishop e4 as well. I was hoping to get a win a pawn here with bishop e4, but I guess that won't be happening. So knight h6... Queen h3. This queen is getting way too active if he can swing over so quickly to the other side of the board. Yeah, this is tricky stuff right here. I can't let that queen get too active on that side of the board. That's the thing. Because if he can play queen a3 followed by queen a8, I am in a lot of trouble because my pieces are not positioned in a way that they can um, they can guard those those squares there. So 
So knight h6, queen a3, maybe queen d8. Could be an option. Knight h6, queen a3, queen d8. Queen where next? I don't know. Not sure. G6, queen a3, bishop g7, queen a8, check also loses. So yeah, I think queen has to come back to d8 basically in this position. So let's continue developing. There's also another issue here, I just realized. Um, so queen a3, there's also queen takes g2 here. I did not calculate that fully. He can't that easily play queen a3. Although I do think that after queen a3, queen takes g2 doesn't work because of queen a check, and I'm getting everything blasted open. Another good thing here is his knight is sort of stuck in some ways on d2. It um, doesn't have as much activity because queen uh, c3 check or queen c1 check is always in the air. So that's also an interesting scenario here. The queen on g5 is, is hitting multiple points. Mm, okay. Develops a piece and... And, um, yeah... Now, do I play queen d8 or do I play queen g4 is the question. Queen d8, castles, bishop e7. Rook c1 or something like that. I don't know. I could bring the bishop back. Queen g4 just doesn't seem like the ideal way to play this position for whatever reason. I just don't like it. I think I'm going to return back with the queen. This is a very interesting game. That much I can definitely say for sure here. Very interesting game. So now castles, bishop e7, rook c1 bishop g or bishop f5 perhaps he'll try to play for i don't know i don't know i feel like my bishop on f8 
will prove to be maybe a little bit better than his bishop on a1. I'm just I'm just thinking that because long term he's got that pawn on e5 that's sort of blocking his bishop. Whereas I can maybe try to get my bishop out of this pawn chain and all this kind of stuff. But um, I definitely don't want to trade into some sort of an end game because he definitely has some advantages with these um, with these um, advanced pawns on e5, c5, etc. I sort of want to keep the tension on the board, keep pieces on the board. If I trade to an end game, this may actually be better for him. You know, I didn't consider one move. Why didn't I consider queen h4? I guess queen a3 still. Well, I guess queen a3, then I, have, then I would have had queen d8 in that position. I'm not sure what... Why didn't I play queen h4? That would have kept much more pressure on the position and would have attacked b4. Man, played that position way. The play that move way too fast. Should have thought about it a little bit more. For some reason, I just didn't even consider. I thought queen g four and queen d eight were my only two options. I had queen h four, a perfectly interesting looking move. But, but I don't know. It's definitely interesting. Queen h4, queen a3. Then I have to play queen d8 anyway. So it's really a question of whether his queen is better on f3 or is it better on a3. I don't know. It's a tricky one. I have no idea. thinking really hard. I wonder what he's planning here. Maybe he's calculating bishop c6, bc6, c4, b4, b5. I don't know. That doesn't seem like a good idea, actually. Okay, yeah. Castling, I thought, was the most logical logical move there. Um,
I guess bishop e7 now, right? Can't think of anything more productive here than bishop e7. So now after I castle, his b4 pawn will become a liability as well. So maybe he'll choose to give up the bishop for the knight on c6. I don't know. Maybe he'll protect b4, but then he has to babysit b4. If he has to do that, then that's that's good for me because I can hit b4. I can still have the option of playing in the center. I have a pass pawn on d5. Got a few things going for myself here. For sure. Only thing is my knight on h6 is very looking um, very awkward. I don't want this knight to feel left out. So we need to think of a way to get this knight into the game. And also the thing is that ultimately his knight on h3 may may get traded for my bishop. Because bishop rook c1, bishop g6, knight f4 hits my bishop right away. I guess rook c1, bishop f5 is possible. Also. But then my knight feels like it doesn't have any good places. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so he plays rook to e1. That is an interesting move. Slightly passive in my opinion. But maybe he wants to use the rook to try to overprotect e5 so he can um, do some other stuff with the rest of his pieces. I'm not sure. Specifically what his plans are here. So now knight takes b4 as a threat. Although, queen, queen c3 hits the bishop and the knight. Okay, so now he's already having to, to use um, <clears throat> his bishop to try to hold that pawn together. That's good for me. That's kind of what I want. So now I think queen c7 followed by b6 is one idea. Queen c7, rook a8, b6. So if I play d4 now, oh, then yeah, c6 is, is a problem. So queen c7 seems logical now. Gives support to c6. Kind of gets ready for b6 when the c file might become open. Overall, I kind of like my position, honestly. Sort of like it. So he forces a trade of these two pieces. That's interesting. I guess I pretty much have to take. I pretty much have to take on uh, d3 here. Okay. If I must, I shall. If b6, then there's b5.
Yeah, B5 is a serious problem here, actually. Do I play d4 here and sacrifice the pawn and play rook d8? That would be interesting. If d4, if he moves his bishop back, then knight takes e5, hits the queen. But then there's queen to queen takes e5, uh, d5. d5, bishop back, takes, queen takes would certainly be an interesting situation. Also d4, bishop takes d4, there's knight takes b4 as well. I feel like I really need to remove this e5 pawn. I think I'm okay with trading my d5 for his, e, my, his e5. d4, bishop back, knight takes, queen takes, bishop f6, knight e4. Oh, yeah, that doesn't seem very good. Well, I guess that doesn't work, actually, because then I have knight f3 check picking up the queen. Otherwise, if I just play a normal move like rook a8 or something, what is he going to do? b5? I want to be able to play knight a5 in that position, then b6. Queen c6. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this d5, so I want to keep this bishop, you know, inactive for as long as possible. So let's continue to improve our pieces. Let's first take over this A file, though. Ooh, B5, Knight A5, there's Rook A1 now. Mm. Yeah, that's annoying. Oh man, yep, I miscalculated actually. I was going to play knight a5, but I can't. I should have just played knight f5 actually. Because him coming onto the a file, I mean, he can't do much here on the a file. Not a whole lot, I don't think. But I could play knight b8 or d8 and let him push through and just really target c5. Because every as soon as he plays b5, c5 is going to be a weakness. So you can't really play it that easily either. I might just get away with knight b8 in that position. Or knight d8 rather. I don't know which one is better. Probably knight d8 just because it's protected square and I don't have to worry about back rank issues with the knight being on d, uh, d8 as much. Very, very interesting situation right now. Here's the thing also I just realized, rook a1 runs into, oh, he can't, never mind. He's not going to play rook a1 right now. I was going to say, if he plays rook a1 now, I can take on e5. After. So rook a1, rook takes, bishop takes, then knight takes e5 is uh, wins a pawn. Okay, so he gets his other knight into the game. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Should I now get my rook into this game by playing rook a3?
let's keep playing improving moves. Let's just get our pieces to better squares. Follow the principle of least active piece and see what White's plans are here. Because I'm still not sure. I know that he wants to play b5 at some point very soon here. But I don't know if he can get away with it because of c5 being a weakness. I might play h6 next to create some sort of a loft for my king. But then that takes away the square for the knight to return head if he ever plays something like g4. That's something to think about. Hmm. Maybe bishop is better placed on f8. I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Where is this knight headed to? Maybe g5 is an option, but then no, that's, that's not a good move, actually. Hmm. There's sacrificial ideas on d5 also, by the way. Let's get our rook activated. My next moves are queen b8, queen a8. So he pretty much has to play rook a1 now, I think, if he wants to challenge on the a foul. You can also play queen c2, rook b8, rook a8, queen a8, queen b2, something like that. Yep. It's certainly one way to play. I feel like now is a good time to go ahead and get grab the A file. So maybe queen b8 now. I guess next will be queen a7. Now again, b b5 is playable for sure. b5 is always in the air. That's why I really would love to get my queen to a6 if possible, to take away the b5 possibility. But I think he's going to play b5 now. 
now is not a bad time to play it at all because it really like pushes my pieces into awkward squares. But again, as soon as he plays b5, c5 will become a ma pretty big weakness, and he needs to he needs to use one of his pieces to constantly guard it. So that's my only advantage there. But man, after b5, my knight. I mean, my knight is is bad. If it has to go to d8 or something like that. I'm playing down a piece pretty much. <clears throat> I would love to get my knight to e4, but I have no idea how. Every square is that I can use to get to e4 is taken. c4, same thing. That's why I would love to get my knight to a5 after a move like b5, but I don't know if I can make it work because he has queen b2. I guess after queen b2, I have knight c4. But then knight d2, oof, this gets really interesting here. I don't know. It's complicated stuff right here. Yep, there comes b5. Finally. So knight a5, queen c1, or b2, knight c4, knight d2. I guess he'll pick queen, yeah, queen he'll play. So knight a5, queen c1. Knight c4, knight d2, there's rook c4. So knight a5, bishop b2. Bishop b4 even. I'm in some trouble here. Because my rook is trapped. After bishop b4, as a matter of fact. Rook takes f3, g takes f3, knight h5. Nah, that's not going to work. Ah, man. Unfortunately, I cannot make this knight b a5 stuff work. So my knight needs to retreat. But can it go to... No, it can't. Can I play something aggressive like d4 here? No. It's too risky. I hate to play a move like knight d8, honestly. Maybe knight a7? But then I run into the whole idea of him trapping my rook again. Anyway, let's go ahead and retreat. So I'm expecting bishop b4 here, probably. Yeah, the challenge is in my rook, and protects a c5 pretty nicely. Rook f3, g f3, knight d4, queen d1, and I have nothing. I, I'm tempting him to play b6. 
then I'll have this light square bind on him. And I'm leaving the option of queen a8 still now. Man, these pawns are look, looking very mean. I'll definitely say that. There's some interesting stuff that there's this this um, c6 business. No, I don't think c6 works actually. Yep, time is winding down. We have to play accurate. So now let's see what is he going to do. Ooh, I missed that. Nice little sacrificial move. Oof, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Man. I guess I have to take it now. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I missed that. Trying to play active still. My knight is going to e6, obviously, next, very shortly. Ooh. Fancy stuff. So rook b4, queen e7. Rook b5, queen e8, mate. Mm. That's a tough one. Maybe bishop f8 is best now. There's some interesting things going on here. Oh, that's yeah, that's getting real interesting real fast. Oh, d5 is a problem. Hmm. I'm kind of playing for a trick. Rook takes b4 is the threat. He saw it. Takes, takes, check. King over. Oof, unfortunately, I can't make it work. That sucks. Hmm. Let's see if I can be tricky with this knight, maybe. Perhaps there are some tricks.
Oh, man. I don't know if this works. I think he can get out of this. Ugh. That sucks. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Rook check. Oh, gosh. Dang it. <laughs> oh, man. That's awful. That's it. That's game. Totally forgot that it created a threat. Oh, gosh. <laughs> man, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Wow, plus 31. How many games has he played? 20. Dang. He did rating 14.22. That's hard to believe. Man, that was a tough loss. I feel like I had something going on over here. Man, 118. Goodness. So many blunders in this game. I really want to look at the end real quick first. So white's completely winning here. Had nothing. Hmm. Insane. I had nothing here. The entire time. Plus for white, that's crazy. Okay, let's look through this. This was a very interesting game. There's no doubt this became crazy. I mean, what started out as a quiet positional Caro is what I was hoping for. He turned it into some craziness. So bishop f5 is a mistake here. I'm supposed to play e6 right away. Hmm. I didn't know that. e6, knight f3, bishop takes c5, I guess. Hmm. Good to know. E6, knight f3, okay, knight c6, f4. E6, bishop e3. So black, so white can actually try to hold on to that pawn. Interesting. So the main move here is e6. Knight f3, bishop c5, bishop d3, okay. Now we know that. White's already better here. So h6 to try to keep the c5 bishop. Maybe at bay or something. I don't know. What's the main idea behind h6? h6, knight f3, knight e7. Definitely out of book already. Should be two. Now I played queen g5 here. So computer suggests 97. G5, that's crazy. Who would play g5 here and why? 
I guess the idea is to play bishop g7. It's kind of interesting. Taking some space because the bishop has already moved off that diagonal. So this is a mistake also. Wow, it's letting me take on g2. That's interesting. So knight f3, queen g2, rook g1, queen h3, rook g3, queen h5. He is getting a lot of play for that pawn. I see, I see. Place this. And here, apparently bishop e4 was the way to go. Bishop e4, queen g3, but I thought I was being tricky by taking on c2 and really trying to play for the initiative here. But... Oh, I took on a... Excuse me, I didn't take on um, c2 here. I took on a b4 first. But the correct way was to go for this ending. With bishop b4, queen g3 takes takes, bishop takes. When white has a little bit of advantage, but playable position. But I went this way. Yeah, I figured he should have played h4 here. Try to get some space and kick my queen off first. But he very quickly plays this. Mm, queen c1 check, queen d1, queen takes c2 that way. Queen takes, bishop takes. So again, wants me to go into this endgame. Okay. But I played this. Kind of missing knight d2, honestly. Didn't really calculate that move too much. So here I played knight h6. g6 was the way to go. Knight h6, queen a3. Didn't I say that this was okay? Why is this so much, suddenly so much better for white? Because I didn't play queen. I don't understand. Just continue developing. Oh, this bishop, this guy. Ah, oh, that's the issue. So it's really tying down my development is what it is. Hmm. And it's really hard to, okay, I see now. The pressure on c6 is building up. Oh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's, man. <sighs> I would have had a hard time seeing all this. I'm not going to lie that he could so quickly get his pieces to pile up on c6 was not something that I would have I would have considered in the game. Wouldn't have found all this. In g4 is... Also suggested queen d8 is what computer likes the best. Queen h4 is not good. Probably because of similar reasons. A queen here, here, and now this knight pops into d4. That's the problem. Okay. Seven. I castled. It's an even game now. Bishop c3, queen c7, doesn't like it. Knight f5 is suggested. d4 is also suggested. d4, bishop c6, b6, bishop b2, queen d7. Complicated stuff. I didn't like this move too much. I felt like he just kind of, I don't know. My bishop on c2 was kind of awkward. And he just kind of gives, lets me off the hook with this. d4 here. 
That's a move I considered for some time, but man, uh, I see, I see why this is good. Cause, uh, oh man, yeah, cause b4 is hanging after I play d4, bishop moves, b4 is taken. So d4, bishop a1, knight b4, queen e4. Okay, so this, this, this. Why not this? Oh, there's a fork on c2. Uh, okay, okay. I see. That makes sense. Okay, so I missed this whole idea. I mean, I considered it, but didn't play it. So rook here. Now it's back to an even game. Here, here. Rook active. Again, I had the opportunity to play d4. I considered this d4, but I think momentarily I did at least, but I don't understand what this... Oh, wow. This is some really interesting things here. Say the queen e4. Wow, so many tactics. I mean, who would have seen all this? Uh, that's crazy stuff right there. I would not have seen all this for sure. Okay, this move I did consider, but I think this, tra I thought this trapped my queen. I mean, my rook. Like this way. Well, there's the same sacrificial idea again. And somehow this works. Yeah, let's say he plays here. I get another pawn. That's interesting. This is a very interesting dynamic situation. It's a lot, a lot to calculate, honestly. In such short amount of time. This is where I just started really falling apart, but it doesn't give him a huge, huge advantage after this though, interestingly. So I go wrong with the rook a4 here for some reason. Oh, cause this queen gets active, huh? He found some incredibly accurate moves here. Wow. Knight C6, 96 was the way to go here. Hmm. So 96, G3, 96, H4, Bishop C5. Mm, 96 hits the bishop. That's what it, I mean, the pawn on c5 is what it is. Okay. Yeah, I missed that. I had a minute left. So I try to play for this practical trick here. So basically the idea was to, so if you try to do something, you know, random, like queen takes d5, I was going to take on b4. So this move loses now to this, and you can't take it because of back rank checkmates. Practically, maybe it's not the worst move to play with 12 seconds on my opponent's clock, but he quickly saw the trick, played this. Here, apparently I was, oh, after this, I have some tricks. Took a one. I didn't consider that too much because I thought maybe he can play queen d1. Um, I thought about it very briefly, but I thought that he just plays here. 
takes and I didn't see any follow up, but I guess this is probably attacking all these pawns and that's, yeah, makes sense. It was, I didn't have enough time to calculate all this kind of stuff. So this is there. I try to keep getting my pieces active as much as I could. So I try to play rook a2 thinking, you know, it's more active on e2, a2, but it's also more risky because now my queen has to tie, is tied to uh, protecting the rook. So he plays that. So I have one for the check now. G3. And yeah, I think nothing works here anymore now. It's too late. Went for a practical trick, thinking that maybe there's some, some sort of something here, but there's really nothing here. We played accurate. Again, try to go for a checkmate idea on h3, but he very quickly found, I mean, look at this. In one second, he found this. Astonishing how well he played in such time pressure. Six seconds, he still had awareness of this. It's crazy. Yeah, the guy is a strong player, man. Definitely a strong player. So hopefully you guys got something out of this game as well. It was kind of a longer game, but uh, it is what it is. Um, Rafi signing out. See you guys on my next video.